in this video I'm going to be looking at a dual dash camera. It's the DRO2D and it's from Aoki and I've checked on their YouTube channel that's how they pronounce that word Aoki. Now this is the first dual dash camera that I've found that's under 100 UK pounds that actually puts in a really good performance. I've got it in my car now and it's going to remain there. Now let me tell you all about it. So we've got two cameras front and back and a lot of other things inside the box. One thing you won't have though is a memory card. You'll need to get that one separately. Now because we're recording two lots of 1080p onto the same memory card I'd suggest it's worth getting a larger capacity one. I'm using a 64 gig card. That means you'll get quite a few days worth of commuting footage on there before it starts to delete the oldest stuff. Right, I'll go through the rest of the stuff that's inside the box. We'll get this large cable out of the way first. This is six metres or 20 foot of USB cable. It goes from the front camera to the back and it is quite a chunky cable as well. I imagine that it's well shielded. So you'll need to route that one around your car. Good luck with that. The shorter of the two USB leads provides power to the camera at the front of the car and that power comes from a twin 5 volt USB power adapter which of course goes into your accessory socket. As far as the mounts go for the rear camera we've got this one here it's got an adhesive pad on one side the other side of that slides into the top of the camera from the side it's quite a tight fit but that means it won't rattle around and create noise on the recording and of course make sure you take that protective lens film off before you start recording and you can tilt this one up and down as well. Now we do have some spare adhesives for those because there's another one of those mounts in the box which doesn't have any sticky tape on one side of it. That's that one there. And then we've got the same thing for the front. We've got a, one without an adhesive pad and then this one here. I'll just show you how that attaches to the camera. So this one, the camera slides down onto that that's going to be stuck onto your windscreen again. I'm just going to take the film off this one to show you. Right, now let's have a look around this. So we've got a couple of LEDs and things here. This again tilts up and down. We've got a very small screen on there. I think it's one and a half inches across, uh, but we've got four buttons below there. A few sort of heat vents, two USB type ports on the back. We've got another one in the middle, another socket there. That's for the GPS attachment. You can see they're labeled below them at the bottom there so you know which one goes where AV's for the rear camera the other one's for the power and then as far as that GPS thing well you can buy that separately it's not in the box and if you plug that in you'll get speed indicator location and it will also pull the time through for the clock in the device also got some little clips here that stick to your car help you to route those cables around 24 month warranty card and instruction booklet in a number of different languages uh, pretty simple to follow as well I'll just briefly show you the specs page out of the manual. This half is the less interesting one for me anyway. It tells us about the image sensor and the CPU, the angle of view of those lenses. But down towards the bottom, there's a couple of bits of information on here that are useful. The maximum size of micro SD card it will support is 128 gigs. And then the operating temperature is a very wide range you can see on there. Now that is also mentioned at the bottom of this page here that's off their website. And the reason it can operate over such a wide range is it doesn't have a battery in it. This is a camera that uses a super capacitor capacitor and therefore according to them it has a longer lifetime than cameras with a standard battery technology. Right let's get it up and running and have a look at it. One thing I will say the micro SD card goes in a recess in a recess so it's quite hard to get it out once the camera is mounted in the car. I end up having to use a set of tweezers to get the card out of mine but anyway above there we've got the microphone hole and then round on the other side there's the reset hole but I haven't had to use that at all. So of course it automatically switches on when you apply power. The first time you switch it on you have to set the language and the date and the time and I also recommend formatting the memory card inside the camera. Now the menus are very clear, very easy to follow and there aren't that many things you can change really. The resolution, you can only change that if you're just using the front camera. If you're using them both, it records in 1080p 30. You can choose whether you want picture in picture or the rear camera or the front camera on the screen as a default, how long you want each segment to record in. Uh, that's where we set the time and date before. The time zone you'd set to be accurate for where you were if you were pulling the time through from the GPS accessory, whether you want the timestamp on or off, whether you want it to record audio. It seems to be defaulted to off, so I've turned that to on. Whether you want the beep sound when you press the buttons, exposure values, again just leave that at zero, frequency for the lighting in your area so it doesn't flicker, whether you prefer miles per hour or kilometers per hour, 
what you want the accelerometer the g-sensor sensitivity to be set at those are the languages and how long you want the screen to remain on before it goes blank and motion detection i'm just going to stop here because this is one that you would use if you had a car that did not disconnect the power to the accessory socket when you turn the ignition off so therefore it would be recording all the time unless you turn this on which meant it would only record when it saw motion now the next feature down, detect LED. This is a green light that's on the outside of the camera that points out of the windows. And you might want to switch that off. I'll show you that later on. Time-lapse record, I wouldn't bother with this. This records one frame every second all the time. It's not like a parking mode or anything. It just means all your footage is going to look really sped up. I don't think there's much use to that at all. And then you've got the format menus at the bottom there. So not much in there at all, really. Now talking about controlling it on a day-to-day -day basis, below the screen here, the bottom left one is your emergency file. Press that, it will lock the current file being recorded and move it into a different folder on the memory card. The next button along gets into the playback menus. You can play back your videos or photos in here. I'll show you how you take a photo in a minute. But if you get into the video file thing, we get all the icons for each clip here. You can move through them. It shows you the date they were recorded at the top. You can delete them and play them back. And when you play them back, they'll play back with audio. It's a little bit tinny, but at least you can hear something coming through on the speaker on the device itself now if it seems like i'm rushing through these features it's because i am and the reason is because they're just standard features on any dash camera that you'll pick up off the shelf that has a screen on it so no need to linger on them too long let's just look at a couple of other things bottom right button that will turn your screen off or on or choose which camera shows on it i'll show you that later if you hold down the settings button rather than getting into the settings that will take a still photo now, whilst you could just use this as a front camera on its own, I can't imagine many people would. If they bought a set with a rear camera in it and they've paid for it, they're going to be connecting it up. So let me connect it up to this camera and show you what that looks like on the screen. So you get a picture in picture. It immediately recognises it. You don't have to do anything. Pressing the bottom right button takes you between the two different camera views or switches the screen off or leaves a picture in picture on there. Occasionally, people ask me, would this be any use as a reversing camera when they see a, a camera with a rear view on it? I'd say no. That's screen is far too small. Now the camera is roughly the same size as my previous dash cam which is a VOFO A119 that's one of my recommended cameras and that's what it looks like in my car. If I swap that for the new one next to it you can see pretty much the same size you're just going to keep a bit of space at the top for those wires to come out of and you'll notice on the outside the adhesive pad is grey which does make it a little bit more obvious but still the camera does hide away up at the top of the screen. You'll notice the green light that's flashing on the front one there that's also on the rear camera that was the thing I mentioned to you previously that you might want to switch off now whilst they're not really noticeable during the daytime once the lights go low those green lights are quite obvious to people outside your car and that's why they're there is to alert them that you've got a dash camera at the front and rear of your vehicle but it's not something i wanted so i deactivated that feature which turns off the green lights on both cameras so to sum up the features of this dash camera, I'd just say it's your standard set. It's what you'd expect to get on any typical dash camera nowadays. It doesn't do anything particularly amazing, but also it doesn't miss anything off that you'd expect to have. There might be some people there that would want a parking mode. And notice at the bottom of this screen of specifics for this particular camera, I've said it has no parking mode. And the reason for that will be because it has no battery. So it can't monitor anything while your car's parked up. That's because it uses that super capacitor, which gives you the better tolerances for different heat and of course you should also get better reliability on a device with no battery over a longer period also I should mention it doesn't have wi-fi either when it comes to looking at the files that the camera creates you'll see on the left there they all start with the year and then the month and then the day of the month and then the time so the one i've highlighted there is the 28th of january 2018 starting at 13 33 and 9 seconds that's file 18a so that's for the front camera and the b files are for the rear camera now they're all mp4s they're all fixed bit rate and the front and back camera you can see they've all got the same size of file there these are the three minute files and those are 10.34 megabits per second okay time to play some sample clips if possible play these back in 4k because that will give you the better quality even though the files themselves are only 1080p and if you think you can see any blockiness to them i suggest you download some sample clips because sometimes youtube re-encodes these things that they don't look as good as they originally did that said i'm very happy with the quality of this camera as i mentioned right at the beginning this is the camera that's staying in my car and i wouldn't just keep anything in there 
that last camera I tried, I don't know if you remember a Z Edge camera that I had dual dash camera thing. Uh, I like the idea of the dual dash cam. The trouble was the picture quality just wasn't up to snuff. Well, this is good enough for me. Now, you might see better quality if you have two separate cameras because, of course, remember, we're recording two 1080p files onto one memory card at the same time here, so they have to compromise a little bit. For example, they can't use the same high bit rates that a single camera could use. But one big benefit is your time is synced up perfectly on the front and back camera. So if you see something happening at 13, 32 and 55 seconds, on the front camera you can then look at the file on the back one and it will be happening at exactly the same time now i just want to show you what happens when i join two clips together here look at the time at the bottom left it happens at 13 36 and 7 seconds you'll notice it jumps back in time a little bit in fact it's exactly one second and that's because each new file that's created on the memory card repeats the last second of the previous file to make sure you don't miss anything now, I've been using this camera in the car for quite a few weeks now, and I've been taking the video footage off the memory card at regular intervals, storing it on my computer, and uh, that was so I had a good variety of footage to show you in this video. But one thing I have noticed is it's taking up a heck of a lot of room. Earlier on, I mentioned it was 246 megabytes for one three minute clip. Well, of course, you've got to multiply that by two because that's the front and rear cameras and it very quickly can fill up a memory card. I've got a 64 gig one in here which is fine it's uh, sufficient I haven't worked out how much exactly that will fit on it but one reason I suggest using a larger memory card than a 16 or a 32 gig is that you'll of course have a longer period of footage on there and you think well that doesn't really matter I only need to know about what happens in the event of a crash well sometimes you only find out about things after the event somebody could say well that red car hit me in a car park a week ago and they trace it from the registration number and they get in touch with you via the insurance company and then you need that footage of what happened in that car park and unless you've got a memory card with a lot of storage on it that footage will have already been overwritten and lost now i'm not trying to be a scaremonger here i just want to explain why some people prefer to have a high capacity memory card in their dash camera now, I've been shortening these clips down a little bit, giving you a bit of a highlight reel. In fact, I just want to show you on the right here. You see this big brick building that we're going past? That's the largest brick warehouse in the world. A strange claim to fame. It used to be the tobacco warehouse in Liverpool. In fact, you might be able to see it a little bit better if we just look out of the rear window. It's there on the left now. But it goes a long way back from there. It's a massive building. In fact, let me show you on an overhead map just to give you an idea as to how massive it is. It's, it's staggering in size. But anyway, I know that's just by the by. But interesting things you see on dash cameras sometimes. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to capture any sun going directly into the camera lens to show you how it copes with that. But I'm sure it'll be fine. Every other condition I've tested it under looks fine. Uh, most of the weather that we've been experiencing at the moment has looked like this sort of rainy, damp, horrible winter. Now, look at this here. Just look at this car take the corner. Brilliant. You've completely misjudged that. And you think, well, maybe it's trying to park on the pavement. So look towards the right-hand side of the image now, and you'll see, no, it's just going down that road there. Just completely couldn't figure out how to get around a corner. But this is a good representation of sort of dusk. You can see everyone's got their headlights on, on the cars. And I think the front camera is a little bit better than the rear camera. If we just... Look to that one there, that's a little bit less distinct, but not massively so. You do notice a much more significant difference though when it comes to darker areas. This road that we're on now, the street lights are quite spaced out. It looks fine from the front because we've got the headlights lighting up the road ahead, but of course the rear camera doesn't have that benefit. There's no lights coming out of the car and pointing backwards, so as you can see, it's pretty dark. Now it's very hard to determine if the rear camera does have a worse performance in low light than the front one, but it might be that they've turned the brightness down a little bit on the rear one, so that if a car does come up behind you with its headlights glaring, it doesn't completely obliterate the image. It might be reduced slightly to compensate for that. But it is something that I thought was worth mentioning, however I don't think it's a big issue either. Now let's have a listen to the audio that's been recorded on the camera. The audio that you're listening to now has been recorded on the camera itself using its built-in microphone. Now some people like to switch the microphone off and you can do that of course with this camera, but it's also useful in capturing sounds that go on around the car. For example you can hear my indicators now. Other notable examples could be perhaps a squeal of someone's tyres or someone sounding their car horn. 
Now the audio that's recorded from the microphone at the front also gets put on the files recorded from the rear camera, which is useful because if you're just giving someone one file to show what happened at the back of your car, you might also want the audio on that. So let's just have a look at that clip. The audio that you're listening to now has been recorded on the camera itself using its built-in microphone. Right, so you get the idea. It's working fine. We've got decent quality video front and rear, decent audio quality as well. No technical issues whatsoever with the camera itself. I've never had to reset it. It hasn't gone wrong at all. It's very easy to operate. The menus, the price is good as well. Really, it's about as good as you're going to get, I think. I can't see that you could get much better in a dual dash camera under £100. And trust me, I've tried quite a few, some that you haven't seen on reviews, that were so bad that I didn't bother finishing making a video about them. I do have to mention one slight issue though, and it's to do with the car really, I suppose. It's to do with the digital radio reception. Having a rear camera in this car seems to interfere with the radio reception a little bit and weaken it. Just listen to this clip and you'll hear the radio cut out. Oak furniture lands up to 50% off, but to sale has extra savings that must end up. To find a store near you, if you're doing a now this only occurs in weak reception areas and then usually just for a second or so every now and then and I think it's a small price to pay to be able to capture footage of idiotic behaviour that's going on behind your vehicle. I mean just look at this taxi driver now, how close he comes to the back of the car. I wouldn't park that close to another vehicle, you couldn't walk between those two. This is an example of a typical stopping distance, you always leave enough room so that in case the car rolls back in front or you need to go around it because it's broken down, you don't try and put your car so close that you could hold a playing car between them. Now briefly getting back to the issue of the digital radio interference. Now it's nowhere near as bad as I had with the previous dual camera I tried which was a Z Edge S3 that completely cut off the digital radio reception. This camera just weakens it but after I'd done that review lots of people got in touch with me to tell me it's probably the USB power adapter and it's good advice because quite often that is a cause of interference and it can cut a radio off and lots of people have experienced that but it is also something that I've got on my website on my guide to dash cams as a section on there about radio interference and I always suggest using a good quality USB power supply and it's something that I adhere to for the last few years I've used the same one which is this one and it's never caused interference on any camera I use so it's nothing to do with that it's to do with the rear camera being near to the DAB aerial. Now the reason I brought this up isn't because I'm looking for help with this problem. I'm quite happy to live with the fact the radio might cut off every now and then in weak reception areas. I just thought it's something I should mention in the interest of giving a complete review. Let me just demonstrate the problem to you. Right, so in this clip you'll hear the radio playing in the car and then listen what happens as soon as I plug the rear camera in. Now the radio reception here is always very weak because the car is between two buildings with a roof over the top of it. Quite an extensive vocabulary. She said 20 pounds on tickets. Oh, and I spent a day trying all these different solutions that you see on screen now without any success. The only one that makes any difference is disconnecting that rear camera. However, I'm going to keep it connected because I value the fact that I've got video of what's going on behind the car above the fact that the radio occasionally cuts out in weak reception areas. And again, I must mention that this is in a mini in the UK with digital audio broadcasting. It's not something that affects everyone. But with the exception of that one issue, I'm more than happy with this dash camera. At the top of the screen, you can see I bought mine on the 23rd of November 2017. It cost me just under £100. I've got a link to Amazon in the UK in the video description text box, which will take you straight to this product. I've also got one for Amazon in the US. You can see there it's just about $132. One thing I will say about Amazon, whenever you go looking at something on there, always make sure you click on this promotional drop down. Sometimes there's some good stuff in there. I'm not saying there is right now, but the other week I Send people to look at another dash camera and there was 20 pounds off or it might mean 30 pounds off anyway it's a pretty good discount all just for clicking on that little drop down so make sure you always do that before adding something to your basket but to sum up out of all the dash cameras i've tested which is quite a few this is the one that i've chosen to keep permanently installed in my vehicle anyway that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching <laughs>